Hello and welcome to True's Tapping Into Transit series, your weekly transit spotlight. Today we have an, our, an update on uh, regional transit happenings from our very own Ben Stupka of the uh, with the Regional Transit Authority. And well, unfortunately, regional transit is not on the ball on the upcoming ballot uh, as it was four years ago. There's still a lot happening on the regional transit front, uh, and we are thrilled to have Ben give us uh, give us all the updates. So. In case there's anyone who isn't particularly familiar, most of our audience probably is, but in case there's anyone who's not familiar, tell us a little bit about what what is the RTA? Why was it created? How does it work with uh, other transit agencies? Sure, um, so so thank you for having me. Thanks uh, everybody out there listening. Um, so uh, the RTA was created in uh, 2012, but wasn't really fully staffed until about 2014, 2015. Uh, its broad roles, which are broken down on the slide, um, are to develop a regional transit plan, um, is to coordinate with the transit providers, um, is to administer regional transit programs, and I would I would put uh, and, and to equitably allocate resources. So one of the formal roles um, that the RTA has in that regard is uh, all of the formula funding that comes from the federal and state government to all the transit providers actually flows through the RTA, um, and it distributes it, distributes it to the transit providers. Um, and its coordination activities are fairly broad. It can it can range from just having monthly discussions with providers and working on small issues of coordination, uh, coordinating grant applications, programs, other things like that, all the way up to have uh, doing joint uh, planning programs uh, that uh, in the RTS has several active planning projects going on right now with the providers and with local communities. Um, so the things that the RTA doesn't do. Uh, we don't operate service. Uh, we don't own and maintain infrastructure. Um, we don't collect fares or any of the local funding that goes to the operators doesn't pass through the op, um, the RTA. Um, and those are those are kind of the main differences uh, between the, the providers and the RTA. So the RTA really looks broadly at the whole region uh, and what are the needs and what are the opportunities to improve and coordinates among all of the actual on the ground providers. That's um, it. Excellent, excellent. Um, now, since the RTA developed a transit master plan back in 2016, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and well, the full funding needed for it was was just narrowly defeated uh, in the 2016 election. There has been some real progress made on some of those. On some of the things that were identified in the in the transit plan, um, uh, certainly not everything because a lot of it takes funding. But right. but there were. Can you talk a little bit about some of the progress that has been made? Sure. Um, so I, I I think the uh, the the few that I want to to bring attention to certainly are the improvements on uh, the Woodward Gratiot and Michigan corridors through the fast service. Um, so the RTA plans have always envisioned uh, better service on those major corridors and in other major corridors in the region. Uh, potential capital investments, of course, was a large part of the plan and something that's difficult to fund without the additional funding and ability to leverage uh, federal dollars. But certainly those fast services, um, uh, the, the ridership uptake we've seen on those corridors, the fact that the Michigan Fast goes out to the airport, um, that airport connection, that, that's a huge improvement that the region's seen. Um, and ridership has, has been responsive pre-COVID, of course, um, to, to those services, particularly um, on the weekends and evenings, you know, periods of time where traditionally you think about adding more service during commute times, but actually adding it where uh, there's more essential riders, more um, more riders who are kind of needs-based riders um, are going to be taking those services. I uh, saw a huge ridership increase there. The other big thing that the RTA has always had in its plans and Smart and DDOT have worked together to, to kind of pull together the basis of is um, unified regional fare. Uh, so now we have, we're uh, lucky that both Smart and DDOT are at similar fare levels. They have similar styles of passes, similar costs for their fares, uh, joint uh, transfer structure between them. And they actually have a joint regional pass called the DART pass um, that that folks can uh, that riders can purchase and use. They have a mobile app that you can use as well. The back end systems, the bigger systems that we would need to manage integrating more mobility options, aren't quite there yet, and we require would require investment. 
but uh, the other systems are are in place. Kind of the front end policy systems are already in place, which is great. The other thing I would say is that a lot of providers um, are either in the process of or have implemented pilots uh, with uh, new mobility services. Um, and this ranges from DDOT doing a night shift pilot um, along Woodward, and now it's major Connect 10 corridors providing connect, uh, first last mile connections through a partnership with Lyft. I know Smart's actively looking at potential micro transit pilots in some of its uh, lower density areas. And uh, AAATA out in Ann Arbor has a service called the Flex Ride that they've deployed in uh, Ypsilanti Township that picks people up on demand, is, is app based, and uses a you know a, a taxi type service to to provide those um, provide those rides. So those are uh, th three things kind of off the top of my head that have already moved forward. Um, I, I would say the one last piece and uh, that we've already moved forward and we did have to delay because of COVID is the connection between Ann Arbor and Detroit. Um, the RTA in partnership with AAATA in Ann Arbor um, uh, uh, developed and have funding for an express bus that connects Ann Arbor and Detroit. Uh, that we unfortunately launched that about the, the, I believe it was March 13th, which was the day all the schools closed. Uh, something we didn't, uh, you know, didn't plan for. Uh, and we ended up having to suspend that service. And uh, we're still kind of working to figure out how best to put it back online. But I want folks to know who are interested in that. Uh, one, we have a we have a survey on our website. So folks, please fill that out. If uh, if it's a service you want to support and ride and tell us how you would use it. Um, and the funding we have for that service is, is secure. Um, so it's just a matter of us finding the right time to relaunch it. Um, and, and then we have some fairly secure funding to have that operating uh, once, once you know, we feel like it's the opportune time to launch it again. That's great. I did actually just get a call from someone yesterday asking, uh, now, how do I get from Ann Arbor into Detroit? Yeah. Well, yes. soon we will soon. have a, a great yeah. new convenient service running. Um, so a number of the bigger improvements we know will take uh, will take more funding uh, to put into place. But what are some of the projects you have in uh, that you're developing right now? Sure. So uh, along with the, so we talked about the express bus service. One of the other uh, plan planning efforts that we're just completing is uh, a regional look at services for seniors and people with disabilities. So this was a collaborative effort between the RTA, the providers, and several um, other service providers in uh, that work with people with disabilities and seniors to really identify the gaps and services uh, for those specialized groups and um, try and deploy and come up with what are the right strategies to kind of start closing some of those gaps. Um, so some of that is gonna require additional funding, but some of it is just, you know, shoe leather. It's just us working in partnership, trying to find the next partner, you know, next opportunity. How do we leverage grant resources? How do we more strategically deploy some of the funding that, that we have that comes into the region now? Um, you know, so we can't make necessarily large improvements there, but we can kind of identify piece by piece how to start bringing that conversation together. So that that pro, uh, that planning process is coming to an end. We're actually going to have a pilot um, that we're still developing that launches out of that. In that same space, we are in just, just at the end of the beta phase for a, uh, a mobile phone app to uh, allow people to book uh, rise in any of the paratransit services uh, in between Smart and DDOT. Um, so this is a huge improvement and access for people to actually book rides on their existing paratransit services. Um, so the beta the the beta has been going pretty well. Um, it is a complicated trip to book, um, and we do hope that if we can get deploy this more widely and it becomes something that is used by um, the the specialized riders in these services, it may be something we can build on for other uh, needs throughout the region. Uh, the other major planning project that we're just kind of coming towards an end on is what's called the Mobility Oriented Development Study. All that is simply is us looking at the Woodward Corridor and the Ann Arbor Detroit Corridor, looking at the station areas and really working with those local governments um, in those areas and, say, and, and trying to come up with ways that uh, allow those stations to become community assets, not secondary thoughts in, uh, you know, when you're working with a developer or you're coming up with your land, land use planning around those areas, but how do we integrate them into the fabric of the community from a land use and development standpoint, but also from a mobility standpoint. Um, so those are, that's been a really good study. We've worked really hard with the local governments um, in those communities. And again, those, those little 
pieces that we identify there help us see potential strategic grant opportunities and other things um, going forward. So maybe it's a partnership to work on, um, you know, sidewalk and bike lane improvements connecting into existing transit stations or, or something along those lines. But where can we find those opportunities to partner? So really some great steps to yep. both um, make substantive, uh, although modest improvements in, in service for riders, regular, uh, regu existing riders and planning and figuring out how to, as uh, we develop a, a broader transit system, how to make it as um, as great of a community resource. I like the way you think about that. Transit isn't just an afterthought. It needs to be a central part of what these communities are doing. Now, in the last minute or so, um, can you tell me a little bit, so we know uh, regional transit isn't on the ballot this year. The county uh, leaders couldn't quite agree on what that should look like, uh, and the legislature wouldn't really uh, go along with letting fewer than four counties go forward. But what sort of planning is RTA doing moving forward? What What is your path forward from here? Sure. So uh, the RTA is kind of taking all these all these smaller planning efforts um, and using those as an opportunity to really think more broadly about what are the goals and strategies that will help advance transit and what does that vision look like? Um, it's not. Uh, it's it's a broader process. It's more of a needs based process. It's something that we hope will provide a basis for whatever the funding mechanism ends up being, whatever that big solution ends up being, and it could be any number of things, that we have a good basis and really have a better understanding of what the community's needs are around transit and how we can how we could potentially advance those strategically. So, you know, if it ends up being a strategic, one single strategic large grant to advance a capital project, then it's in the plan and it's identified and it's something we can all get behind. So the RTA has a, a kind of a broad schedule to have that done by the end of the year, uh, the end of the summer in, in the summer time frame. Um, and we're going to be working on deploying some conversations over the next you know couple of months, probably into the spring a little bit more to really start gathering that input and making sure we're accurately identifying people's transit needs. So early, early next year, there'll be opportunities for people who have thoughts and suggestions for what the transit systems should look like. Um, there will be opportunities for the public to get involved then. Excellent. Um, excellent. Well, uh, even if you're not making uh, headlines, there's certainly a lot happening on the regional transit front. Um, so we thank you for all of your work coordinating all of that and your time with us today, Ben. Um, and I do wanna, of course, thank uh, all of the true members that make this work possible. True can only operate as a transit advocate and only provide these types of video updates uh, through the donations and support of our of our members. So if you're a member, thank you. If you're not, please do consider joining True, whether that's at $5, $5 $50, $5,000, whatever level is right for you. We really need that support to, to, to make this work happen. Uh, and again, stay involved in the conversation. Uh, this is an on, a lot happening. Um, even before next spring uh, or early next year, you can certainly be involved at DetroitTransit.org, uh, online, on Facebook, on Twitter, um, to keep the conversation going. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you again, Ben, for all you're thank doing. You. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Yeah. Talk to you later. Bye.